Hi, I'm Brian Burns, and uh, I make classical and flamenco guitars here in the little town of Fort Bragg, California, on the California's north coast. And uh, I teach guitar making as well, and have been for a number of years. Um, I've also taught uh, flamenco guitar playing and woodworking, and it seems like all my life I've taught something. Uh, but up until about six years ago, uh, I had never tried uh, teaching one person at a time. Uh, I've taught classes in most everything imaginable. And uh, the problem with the class is that the, about the best you can do is to keep everyone equally dissatisfied. The, you're going too fast for the slow ones and too, fa uh, too slow for the fast ones, and the guy in the middle is not getting enough attention. So, uh, and also the administration of a class is, uh, takes a lot of time and energy. So I decided about six years ago to try teaching one person at a time and see if there was enough interest in it really to, uh, uh, to make it go. And it's been marvelous. It's just been wonderful. Uh, the uh, people have been delighted with the, the results. I enjoy the process a lot more. We can, I can custom tailor my teaching right to what the person wants to know and just the right amount of it. Uh, we can turn on a dime. I had one student come in and the first thing we did was sharpen and tune up his plane, which I always do. And I said, now what do you want to do? And he said, uh, you know, I've always wanted to know how to French polish. Well, French polish is the very last thing you do in making a guitar, but no need to follow a syllabus or a particular linear way of, of teaching. And that was what he was interested in at the moment. So we got out some wood and sanded it smooth and uh, we spent the rest of the morning uh, doing French polishing. And, and he knew by noon he knew how to French polish. So anyhow, it's just been great. Uh, I've really enjoyed it. I've had uh, dozens of students from literally all over the world. I've had uh, one fellow came from Korea for a couple of weeks and I had a fellow come from Ireland for a month. Uh, typically people come for a, a, a week initially. That's about it's pretty intense, so, so that's about all you can absorb, really, unless you come from a long ways away. Uh, I usually recommend that, uh, that you come for a week. So everybody that comes gets a copy of my uh, uh, booklet on sharpening. I, I'm a great believer in doing the fundamentals well. And sharpening, you can't get much more fundamental than, than sharpening. Uh, and when I learned how to sharpen to a, a world-class edge, suddenly the hand plane became uh, a, a wonderful tool, and I use it for a dozen or 15 different operations and a whole lot of little ancillary operations. Uh, so you get the copy of my sharpening booklet, and you get a set of plans, and I uh, have plans for three different sizes of guitar, or classical and flamenco guitar, and they are all within about a 2% range. The very small differences in size make a whole lot of difference uh, in the uh, in the sound of the guitar. So this is the side view and uh, bridge plans up here in the upper left. And this is uh, full size. And then we have also a back plan, which is this guy here with uh, a little auxiliary sheet on here that uh, that shows how I attach the uh, the neck to the body and. Um, the uh, plan uh, printer can now print uh, black and white photographs. Uh, this is a small town. The, the big towns have color photographs on their plans. Um, but this has been working really quite well for me. So there's the back plan and, of course, the top plan with the uh, bracing system. And I'm, I've recently uh, switched to using the Romanios uh, and uh, Jeff Elliott uh, bracing system, which uh, has a couple of... of, uh, of uh, archways in the crossbars and a, a fan brace that runs up into here. And it adds a wonderful uh, uh, new resonance up in the high treble where uh, nylon guitars really could stand to, uh, to have a little boost. So I'm going to uh, show you some tools and some processes that we might, uh, might go through while you're here. And uh, for that, we're going to switch to over on the bench. The whole purpose of the sharpening setup is to get this plane and also occasionally your, your chisels into world-class condition. If you've had uh, somewhat less than satisfactory experiences using a hand plane, you can, for once you can blame the tool. Almost all planes are warped lengthwise this way, need to be flattened. Even the, this wonderful little plane from Veritas, which uh, I use for every joint in the guitar, uh, needs some work to get it up uh, to doing the best job it can do. 
Um, and this sharpening system does it fast. You, you can learn it right away. Beginners uh, uh, end up with a world-class cutting edge the first time out, and it's fast. I can do a, uh, take a plane apart, sharpen it, and uh, my record, I think, was 2 minutes and 23 seconds to be back to planing again. So, uh, so it's a, it, the sharpening process is a means to an end. It's not, a, not an end in itself. So what I use the uh, a typical thing I use the, the that little plane for, and a lot of people think you need a big plane to do this, but in fact, Eugene Clark showed me how to do this back in 1962, three somewhere in there. Um, you you use the plane on its side, and here's your uh, this would be a soundboard for instance, uh, uh, which and soundboards and backs are all two piece match and need to be glued together in the center. Well, it turns out that the very best joint actually is ever so slightly curved, only a two or three thousandths of an inch, but it makes it a lot easier to clamp and uh, it keeps the ends together. So you use a plane on its side like that, and uh, if your plane's really sharp, you can produce these nice fine little shavings. You can get very good control over how the joint goes together. Uh, but uh, the plane's got to be dead sharp and dead flat in order to work that way. So that's one of the very first things we do. And I recommend that people buy one of these Veritas planes. Uh, the uh, order numbers and everything are in the book. Um, and of course you can talk on the phone and I can tell you how, what to get and where to get it. Uh, and we tune it up. That's one of the very first things we do. So then we use this same goody here uh, as a uh, gluing form. So we, we'll set up a, a strip of wood along here, make the whole uh, sound board and back um, a sort of wedge shape, put some glue on it and jam it in with some weights on it, and that's it. And then we set this aside until the glue dries. So then you've got, typically we'll do a, a sound board and a back uh, joint and uh, and then cut them out to shape um, and once in a great while uh, someone will want to make their own rosette and Brian Peterson the man behind the camera there uh, just finished this rosette yesterday and uh, I'm very pleased with it. This I drew this up and had never made one and Brian put it together and it's got these little uh, 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 gold mother of pearl uh, dot inlays and it just uh, when the inlays went in it just snapped. It's a wonderful design. I'm really delighted with it. Um, so then uh, another thing we do is we bend a set of sides and I laminate sides and a lot of people are starting to laminate sides uh, for, for various reasons. For one thing they always come out perfect uh, and they're stronger uh, and it's easier uh, to, to laminate a side than it is to, uh, and, and much more certain of the outcome uh, than, than it is to do it with a, um, a heat bending machine or uh, certainly with a bending iron. Now some guys get really skilled with a bending iron and can, uh, can do a great job. But uh, I found that, uh, that uh, it's a three-ply lamination. I found that uh, I could bend virtually any kind of wood. I, I wanted to make a couple of guitars out of port or from cedar which does not heat bend for beans. So I had done a lot of uh, laminating in uh, furniture making and uh, so I tried uh, uh, bending some and I've recently come up uh, just by the laminating process and, and the results were so spectacular I just decided, <laughs> I never looked back, I just decided okay rosewood, cypress, whatever I'm going to bend it's going to be by laminating. So recently I've tried, uh, usually I would bend with an inside form, recently I've tried with an outside form and it makes the form is easier to make and the results uh, are wonderful. You can make the uh, uh, bending form uh, be the, the uh, exact same size and shape uh, as the assembly form. So, um, so this, is, and this is all done with a vacuum bag uh, and three layers of, of veneer which you make yourself and uh, uh, and epoxy. I use uh, West Thism epoxy to glue the, uh, the uh, laminates together. Um, and let's see, okay, what else we got? Oh yes, um, the thicknessing of the veneers that go into the um, sides and the thicknessing of the top and the back are all done on a drill press uh, using this uh, sanding disc which was developed by uh, 
John Gilbert, the uh, uh, classical guitar maker. You know, this is a really useful uh, device because it does a lot of the grunt work that you'd have to do with a hand plane. Uh, it's possible to make guitars uh, just with hand tools and millions of them have been made that way, but it's a long, uh, hard road to, to go uh, if you're gonna do it entirely with hand tools. So this guy is what I use for doing the thicknessing of the, of the side veneers in the back and the top. Um, and let's see, what else have we got here? Ah, oh, yes. What you want to end up with, of course, is one of these. This happens to be a flamenco guitar with cypress back and sides. Uh, I've got a couple of students making um, uh, classical guitars with cypress because it has a rather lighter, brighter sound. Um, but, uh, of course, you can do uh, rosewood and spruce or cedar or any combination that you want. Now, I'm not in the wood supplying business, um, but um, I will sell tested wood, and I test all my woods carefully. Uh, I will sell tested wood to a student that's making a guitar with me. And, and, I, and we also uh, cover the wood testing process, which is, uh, uh, just requires some mechanical uh, tests, some deflection tests. And, uh, and there's, a, there's a small amount of engineering that goes <laughs> into doing these things, but you're just looking at pictures. There's no, no calculations to do. Uh, there's a little bit of data entry, which uh, anybody can do, uh, to get the information into a, uh, into a spreadsheet. But uh, the whole object of this operation is to end up with one of these. <laughs>